Okay, so we're back for part two. So let's kind of summarize what our important ideas are here. And when we are describing binomial distributions. Now if we want to describe what's happening here, in terms of the shape, in terms of the shape, we want to make a histogram. So we look at the probability distributions of that. We want to make a histogram. In terms of the center, we want to calculate the mean, which is the number of trials times the probability of success, whatever that is. And in terms of the variability or the spread, we want to use the standard deviation, which is the square root of n times p times 1 minus p. So it's the square root of that whole thing. And when we are doing the interpretations, we want to make sure that we also say how many trials. So on the other side, we were taking five shots, five penalty kicks. We want to make sure that we specify that. Okay, so let's do an example here. Check your understanding. Mr. Miller's class is very difficult. It is so hard that when he gave a pop quiz recently, the students just guessed on every question. Each student in the class guesses an answer from A through E. Now that means the choices are A, B, C, D, E, five choices. On each of the ten multiple choice questions, Hannah is one of the students in this class let y equal the number of questions that Hannah answers correctly. So, does this setting represent a binomial distribution explain? Well, we're going to check the bins. First of all, is it binary? Are there two possibilities each time for each trial? And the answer is yes, we can get success. That would be a correct question. Or failure is an incorrect or a wrong question. So, binary, yes. Independent. Well, we can say it's independent because you're guessing and what happens on one question does not affect the answer to the next question. Number of fixed trials? Well, we're taking 10 questions. Okay, so that is a fixed number that stays the same. And do we get the same probability of success? Well, each question has five choices. The probability that we guess correctly is one out of five, which is 0.2. So yeah, each question will have a probability of 0.2. So yes, this is a binomial distribution. Yes, it is binomial. Now, it says use technology to make a histogram of the probability distribution of y. Describe its shape. I've already gone through and I've done this. Now, I had to calculate each of these. And, and then I was able to draw it. And I drew it with the calculator. So, I went to, sorry, stat plot. Second y equals. Turn my plot on. And I'm using the histogram right there. X list is L1. And the frequency, the probability of getting that is list 2. And then in my window, what I ended up doing, the X scale, each of these is 1. Okay, because I can only answer one question, two. It's all integers, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And the graph looks something like this. Now to get to that, I had to go stat, edit, and um, in this case, oh actually I want to use L3 and L4, L3 and L4. Let me go back to stat plot. I was using the wrong thing. So list 3 and list 4 is where I typed that answer graph. Okay, so that looks better. Now you'll notice we don't even see what's happening here for the last few questions. And the reason is if you look at my graph, 
Now the probability is of getting zero right. So if you guess randomly at 10 multiple choice questions with five choices, the probability of getting none of them right is 0.11, it's 11%. The probability of getting exactly one question right is 0.27. And then the highest probability is you get two correct. It's 0.3. But then notice how quickly this drops off the probability of getting half of the questions right is only 0.03 and then 0.006. By the time we get to 10 questions right, the probability that you would guess all of these correct is 1 in 10 million. <laughs> so basically, if you're guessing, you have no chance of guessing correctly this many times. So to describe the shape, we would say this is skewed to the right. And uh, we can say it's with a single peak at two. Okay, or we can say it's unimodal. Okay, we have one mode. Now, the equation that I was using for this was out of 10 questions, we're gonna choose K correctly, and then it's 0.2, that's the probability of success raised to the K, one minus that is 0.8 raised to the 10 minus K. So the way that I came up with my probabilities here, and I did binomial PDF of guessing, and, and what I did was I started zero and 10, and then one and nine, two and eight, and I just kept doing that. Calculate and interpret the mean of y. Well, the mean of y is n times p, the number of trials times the probability. We did 10 questions. The probability of guessing correctly is 0 0.2, and so we get two. Notice that the highest probability is that we get exactly two questions correctly. Okay, so this makes sense. So the, in terms of interpreting this, we would say that after many quizzes, so if we were to repeat this many times, we expect the average number of correct questions, the average number of correct questions out of 10, is two, is two questions. Okay, we, that's the, this is the expected value, this is the mean. So after many quizzes, if you did this many times, sometimes you would get less than two, sometimes you would get more than two. But on average, in the long run, we would get two out of 10 correct, on average. Calculate and interpret the standard deviation of y. Standard deviation is the square root of n times p times one minus p. So that would be the square root, 10 trials. The probability of guessing correctly is 0.2. The probability of guessing incorrectly is 0.8. Okay, that's one minus 0 0.2. That's how we're coming up with that value right there. And this is the calculator question. So square root. 10 times 0.2 times 0.8. Okay, looks good. Enter, and we get 1.26, 1.265. So the standard deviation of y is 1.265. Okay, so we would expect that this, that the number of questions correct, so we expect the number, I'll just use my number symbol, the number of correct questions to typically vary by 1.265 questions from the mean. which is two. We expect the number of correct questions to typically vary by 1.265 questions from the mean, which is two. And that is the end of the notes.